This is the Evercade EXP, and we're going to turn it on. We're going to check out all the games on the IRM collection, as well as the Capcom games. And then we even included the uh, Toaplin games as well. So we're going to check out all these, and let's see what this looks like. Ooh, just dropped one of them on the ground. Not only is it a cool portable system that accepts cartridges, but you can also play it in Tate mode. Or you might say Tate mode. I've always heard it as Tate mode, so I don't know. And do me a huge favor. Favor? Hit the subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. Loading, loading, loading. Evercade EXP. And away we go. There's no cartridge inserted. Okay, well, <laughs> that's not a great way to start. But we'll fix that with a couple of them that we'll insert here. The Irem collection, which came with the system, as well as this Toplin collection, which uh, we'll pop in here a little bit too. And we'll check out all the games on all these. Now, before we even punch in anything, we have the no cartridge inserted. We see that. Now, I already booted this up. I already set up like the Wi-Fi. I set up the uh, settings and all that too. And you can always go back into the settings as needed. But nice to know that if you don't have a cartridge inserted, that is pre-built with a ton of Capcom games. And we'll have a look at those games too. There's also hidden games, zero out of five games unlocked. Gotta find out what those games are. And then something else coming soon, maybe through uh, like a download, maybe through an update. Uh, you never know, you never know. But in the meantime, this is the Evercade EXP. You also do have uh, your LNR. Uh, people are asking like, why is there two of them? Like if it's like, you know, Super Nintendo and stuff like that, why would you need two of them? Well, there are some uh, collections that have even add uh, PlayStation 1 games available, and PlayStation 1 games have, have the two buttons, so you never know. They're, they're pre prepared just in case. This is your power button right here, and you have an HDMI mini. Interesting to know that when you plug it in, it shuts off. So now you have to put it, you know, it, it recognizes there's something. There you go. And now we're restarting. So there you go. So you can play this if you'd like, you know, just as a controller on your monitor itself as well. So that's a, that's a nice feature. I'm sure there's a way around it, but I did try to plug this in through my capture software and it wouldn't recognize it. It didn't even know it was there. I plugged it in through the thing I always use for capturing any any gameplay footage from any of my consoles. I plugged it in through that. Um, I just didn't recognize it, which is fine because I wanted to show you what it looks like on screen with the Tate mode and everything. But again, I just thought that was weird. Again, I'm, I'm sure there's a way around it. I couldn't figure it out. The undercarriage here buttons for your volume. I like it when they have buttons instead of like an analog slidey thingy. And then you have your USB-C for power. This is for charging. And your headphone port. I like it when they have a headphone port. And then this T button is your Tate mode. You can click it now. It's not going to do anything. You'll, you'll see the little icon up in the corner there saying, hey, okay, now you can play, you know, this way. Now you can play it this way, like this. Actually, I have to raise this up a little bit. So instead of playing like this, you play it like this. So you have the longer screen. The Capcom games includes are amazing. You can also save it wherever you want. There's even a, co a competition mode. Might be kind of fun. It also lets you know some stats down there. I haven't played this game yet on this device. Gets you a little uh, instructional what's going down. And when you're ready, just hit play. And you're ready to go. Got the select button. That's your insert coin button. You already paid for this thing. Insert all the coins you want. Thinking with that Tate mode, something like this. Well, it'll look a little bit better longer. So hit this button down here, just like that. Now you're playing like this. Let me just do that loop-de-loop -loop because I hit the wrong button every time. Oh, well, there you go. Maybe I'm better off with it this way. <laughs> well, whatever. Oh, come on. I hit the same button again. So no matter which way you're comfortable with, if you're cool with this way, totally fine. Totally fine. Get some guys out of the way. Hit the button again. It's that quick. That's how... Hit, let's hit the button again. That quick every time. So it, it's nice that it gives you that option. Whenever you want to switch to that mode. Jeez, I already lost, huh? <laughs> this button here, that's your menu button. He'll go right back out. Quit. Yeah, so I have 1943, 1944, Bionic Commando. Oop. This is your arcade version. The arcade version of Bionic Commando. And this one's actually streams... Let me try it this way. See, that would... Yeah, it gives you that option anyway. This is the arcade version. Not like... I mean, same similar idea, but it's not the... Um, this is more linear than the Super Nintendo one was, or the uh, NES one was. Jeez, too busy talking, not enough actually playing the game here. But you have something like this, Breath of Fire. How loud does this go? It doesn't get too loud. Captain Commando, to beat him up. Play as Baby Commando if you want. Now I played this on the PlayStation 1 of all things, but happy that it's on here too. Oh, it's great. And from my angle, it looks pretty good to me. Nice clean screen, see it from any angle. Commando is one that you definitely want to play in a Tate mode here. Whoop. And it doesn't feel too top-heavy or anything like that. I was concerned about that. 
Like, if it was going to be, like, too awkward to play this mode, but... I mean, right now I have my hands... You know, like, resting on the table. Jeez. This is your arcade version. You can play as a guy if you want. Of course, I'll be higher. Well, you've seen this game before. Now, Forgotten Worlds is interesting because Forgotten Worlds in the arcade has a turn knob for which direction you want to go. So I'm guessing it's going to be the L and R buttons, except we're going to find out here. Yeah, so in this one, you're shooting, but then your L and R buttons are going to spin you around for which direction. You know, instead of having the turn knob, so that might be a little weird, but you know, better than nothing. We got Ghouls and Ghosts. This is the uh, sequel to Ghosts and Goblins. That's right. Oh, look at this one, Legendary Wings. Maybe you played this on the NES. Pretty decent game. One of those 80s Capcom games, 80s Capcom arcade games, which I absolutely love. Starts out as a shooter, gets, you can go inside the things, and it goes side-scrolling after a while. Yeah, let's go inside. Why not? And why did I go inside? Yeah, it turns into like one of these kind of stages here. Yeah. It's cool to see things like Mega Man on here. This is your NES Mega Man. I'm cool with this. The audio is a little muffled compared to how crisp it would sound on an NES. You know, this might be the uh, the speaker back here. Same for Mega Man 2. But yeah, you got Mega Man 1 and 2 on here. That's that's in this bundle. That's as part of the system. There it is. Come on now. You even include Mega Man X on here as well. I mean, why not, huh? All right, this is going to be the arcade version of Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting. So you get access to all the characters here. Sure. Let's see how see how well we do here. And then you have the L and R buttons are going to be your... Yeah, it's like Super Nintendo style. Ah! The audio... I wonder if the audio would be better coming from a... Coming from a, um, headphones. Oh, my dumbass was trying to pause it. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, it's an arcade game. You can't pause arcade games. Yeah, I'm listening through the headphones right now, and... The audio is still a little not great. The audio through my headphones sounds like this, but just next to my ears. Another personal favorite with Strider. This is the arcade version. See, and that sounds pretty good. I mean, that's that's the way the arcade version sounded back in the day. So it might just be some games. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, I love this game. <laughs> I just love that Tate mode. Okay, Volgus, this is going to be another, uh... Yep, figured as much. Whoop. Yeah, they like including this one on here. Just an early, early Capcom arcade game. Then Mercs is definitely going to be something built for this. Let me just hit that button immediately. And this is like the sequel to Commando, so... Had a lot of fun playing Mercs on the Sega Genesis back in the day. This is going to be... This is a good one to have on here. So I just popped in the arcade, the uh, Irem collection. And there you go. Didn't even have to wait for it. Oh, this is the Top Lane collection. Okay, well... That's fine. Let's do that one. <laughs> I just popped in a random one. Alcon. Let's do it. Thank you. How fun. Oh, come on. The very first thing that shot me. Well, you know. Flying Shark. Is a Sky Shark? Is the original name for Sky Shark Flying Shark? I didn't know if that's the case. I, mean, I love these for Sky Shark, and this looks like it to me. Guardian, huh? I'm not familiar with Guardian. Ooh. Oh, I love it already. Oh, come on. How great is this? Look at this! Look at the, Look at the chubby! I love it! <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to streaming more of this. Oh, here we go, Snow Brothers. Pretty interesting down here. Yeah. <laughs> Little bubble bobble-ish, you know, but you get the idea. Tekipaki. Looks like a puzzle game. Well, I'm... Yup. Now, although it has two players, I mean, you can still play this on your, you can still play this on your uh, Evercade Versus as well. I'm not sure if it's uh, three in a row or what are, we, what are we trying for here? Four in a row? Nope, not four in a row. All right, what are we, what are we looking for here? All right, looking for a cluster? Sure. Clusters of five? Is that what this uh, game is all about here? Okay, well, I'll wait. Seems pretty cool. Would be Tiger Heli. Let's go Tati on this one. This is the arcade version 
far superior to the NES version. A lot of, a lot of people like that NES version. I'm not so gung-ho about the NES version, but the arcade version is really cool. And you get, this gives you a chance to play that arcade version. Just like this. Oh, this is great. Yeah, this is this one's super great. This is Truxton, the arcade version. Come on now. Ah, oh, come on. This is great. I love that. Love that skull that shows up for like a second too. Zero Wing. Now most people know Zero Wing as that all your base or belong to us game. Um, but the game itself is actually a really fun shooter with a pretty fun gimmick too. Because you can do that little sucker thingy. See? You can suck up the enemies. You can shoot them, of course. But you can also grab one and like use it as a shield or something. <laughs> oh, got it. See? Anyway. And then while you're here, you can sort by title, sort by release date, you know, whatever's good for you. I'm gonna pull it out just like this. It'll already recognize that there's no card in there. The cart feels pretty warm too. That's the, the battery working. Feels a little warm. Might just be the battery working overtime here. It's not like hot, hot. But it is, it's it's warm. Just just from that. Hmm. That should be fine, but there's a vent there. This is probably the vent. Maybe these are the speakers. I don't know. It probably didn't help the fact that I was playing it like this, clogging the vent. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do that. So here's the Irem Collection. Got six games on here, including Ten Year Fight. Let's check a look. I'm sure you're probably familiar with the NES version, but this is the arcade version. Ooh, Ooh look at this. If you ever played the arcade version of Ten Year Fight, well, very similar. <laughs> but you know. Uh, got me. <laughs> here's Battle Chopper. This game's called Battle Chopper. I'm not as familiar with this game, but... You can shoot above you and next to you. You can also, un looks like you can uncover things by doing that. Whoa. <laughs> Love when it does stuff like that. This game is called In the Hunt. I had this for the PlayStation 1. Cool underwater shooter, lots of pixels. Because yeah, uh, so many shooters take place in outer space and stuff like that. Why don't I have one take place underwater? Here we go. If this plays like a shinobi, I'm okay with that. Up is jump. Hey. Well, I'm cool with this game. Yeah. Awesome. I'm sure there's more to it than that, too, but... All right, well, I'm looking forward to playing more of this. The classic in Moon Patrol. Man, I played me a whole lot of this in the arcade growing up. Come on, now. Wow. And it just wouldn't be an Irene collection without R-Type, really. You know, and this audio sounds good, too. I wonder if it was just that, um... The, the Street Fighter 2 that just sounded, you know, a little garbled. You heard what I, you, you heard, what I heard, too, right? I bet if I pop this, like, the headphones back in my ear for this game... It'd be rocking. I, I love when arcades used to sound like this. See? See that little maneuvering there? Come on now. Yeah, even barely having hair, I still have headphone hair. How'd that work out? Yes, there was news about this recently, and uh, I'm not, I don't need to cover that uh, on this channel. Uh, however, if you need yours, link in the description below. Gonna make it happen for you. Very, very cool device to have, and looking forward to seeing what new collections are coming out soon as they do uh, with Evercade every time. So thank you for watching, I appreciate that. Jeez, I already got fingerprints on it, come on.